Hey, yo. L-A-Z. You heard Z-Man Suicide Polo with the ski, man. Now, I mean, shout out the whole Bronx. Shout out the bro Woodchuck. On Rikers Island right now. This interview was done live from Rikers Island. You heard? Shout out to all the brothers out there fighting cases, trying to get home. You heard? It's serious. Don't take your freedom for granted. Shout out to the bro Shadow for putting this interview together for me. You heard? Shout out to the whole Brooklyn man, the whole NYC. Whole Gen Pop gang, if you rep that Gen Pop gang, that Slim Blunt gang, that Comment gang, you heard? I need y'all to tear this up on them comments, baby. You heard? If you got a loved one locked down, currently in any jail, leave a comment, shout his name out. My name is OG Woodchuck 3030, aka Cripple 3030. All the Mafia, Harlem Roller 30, Crip. When I came home, I actually uh, started doing acting. I have I have my own TV show, my own clothing line, started my own corporation. Now I'm back in jail with a body, um, and I'm fighting that. You know what I'm saying? You said that was your first time laying up in nine two. Yeah, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four. In the four building. I was in the four building, nineteen ninety two, as an adolescent. I came in at as uh, 16, 16 years old, about to be 17. Mm. Because it was a few months before I was gonna be 17, they charged they charged me as an adult. Mm. I was uh, I was fighting an attempt mur attempt uh, murder on a police and an armed robbery at the time. Mm. That you caught but, in the Bronx. Uh, it, was, it was real. You yeah, that I got case? caught in the Bronx with uh, three co-defendants. You know what I'm saying? But I, that shit was stressful as shit for me. And, 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 I, and I'm not going to lie, the first time that I got locked up, um, that I closed the, the cell, I cried. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was no more mama love, no none of that. The shit was, the shit was stressing. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Had a lot of fights over my sneakers. Had a lot of fights over not wanting to wash clothes. All of that, and you know, in the process, that's how I ended up earning my respect. You know what I'm saying? Because when lose a drill, I, I fought the fight. You know what I'm saying? You said niggas was trying to get you to wash clothes? All of that. All of that. Back then, it was real. You know what I'm saying? People tried. What crib? What tried, crib you was you know in? What, what house you went to? I was to? in. I, originally, I was in Mar 6. And from Mar 6, they moved me to Mar 9. From Mar 9, I went to. Um, I believe it was either two upper or two main. Uh, and I, I pretty much juggled all around after that. I was uh, two upper. I was in Mar Nine like three times. I was in Mar Eight. I was in um. I was in uh, two lower. I was in one main. I was in um six lower. Like I, I was pretty much all around the building after that. And what what building you in now? Uh, I'm in the four building right now. Right in a, a murder charge. It's a lot different right now. Like, it, see, back then it was all about boroughs. You know what I'm saying? There was no gangs in existence yet. You had some Yetas, you had some Latin Kings, but majority, majority of the beefs and everything, uh, the groups and stuff, is about boroughs. Like Bronx, Brooklyn. It just so happens I always found myself in Brooklyn crib. So I was always in a Brooklyn house, riding, you know, riding for people that I got cool with from Brooklyn. That's how I met Shadow and, and you know and a bunch of, uh, of other of real individuals that became my comrades. So you said that the island is completely different now. Absolutely. Ooh. Now it's about gangs. Like now it's about you know you crip, you blood, you Latin kings, you patria, you um uh, YG, OY. They they got a whole bunch of different stuff now. I'm saying that even the blood is broken down and just that instead of being united, like. You know, it's, it's a very complicated issue, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm pretty good because, you know, I'm experienced from being here. I'm around a lot of real individuals. A lot of older individuals already know me from my first bid. So my, my bidding is a lot easier than it was when I was a kid. How long you said you've been laid up on the island right now? Two years. Damn. It's but then, like, when I did... When I did my first bid, what I ended up doing was I went home in 2005. 
and I, I had a nice run out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? I did like 13 years out there without getting into trouble. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have, you know, I started I started working that first day construction. Then I started doing acting. Like, I, I came out in shows like Power, uh, Orange is the New Black, Blue Bloods, uh, Lone Order the SBU, stuff like that. I started my own TV show. It was first a podcast called Back. Back Talk of Cripple 3030, you actually could find it on YouTube or Back Talk Media. That's the channel. Um, I even did a rap song just to say I did it. You know what I'm saying? On SoundCloud, you can look it up on Cripple 3030. It wasn't like a career move, but I, uh, Funk Master gave me a six on the one of 10 scale. DJ Chuck Chill Out gave me an eight. And DJ Superstar J gave me a seven from when they came to visit me on my podcast and stuff. It's big, though. It's big. Yeah. But, you know, as, as I, I did the TV show, what I used to do for my TV show was I interview ex-cons and staff members about their experiences in prison. So, you know what I'm saying? So they, they can let society know what happened to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not too far from, you know, from something that you're, like you're doing right now. So you said you went up top on your first bid? Yeah, I went up top in 94. And I stood up there till 2005. I actually could have went home after four and a half years, but um, you know, I stayed in. I stayed in. Um, I stayed in trouble and stuff. You know, stabbing and cutting people and stuff like that. You know, because I had to defend. You know, the fact that I was crip. Yeah, I ended up pretty much maxing out of my bed. So what you had to get it on your whole bed because you was crip? Yeah, pretty much. For myself and also for my other locals, you know what I'm saying? Because back then, it, you know, there was maybe like five locals and we going against like 300 bloods. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. You know, like it was it was real difficult to be crept back then. Now it's a little different. You know, crips got more numbers and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like we helped pave the way already for that. Yeah, man, I was going to say like it ain't no, ain't it a few jails now where, you know, crypt, that's crypt jails? Yeah, yeah, no, now it's a different, now it's a whole different story. Like, now you can go to a jail and it'd be like 40 and 50 crips in a jail. Back then, that was unheard of. You know what I'm saying? You had maybe a handful. You know what I'm saying? You, you had, you know what I'm saying? You, you have common names like like Blue Boy, Shadow, Woodchuck, which is me. You have, you know what I'm saying? You have uh, Psych Bite, Biz. You know what I'm saying? You got a, a D-Rock, I, I, Hollywood, Devil. There's a, you know, there's a few lists of, of those that actually put it in, but it wasn't that many of us up there. You know what I'm saying? In the first place. So now there's a lot of numbers. So now it's different with the jail system. So it's a little easier now for a crypt to, to be able to survive in the prison system. Hmm. It's the same way on, on the island now? Yeah, yeah. On the island, the same way. Um, it, it feels weird that I, I come across... I, you know, I walk down the hallways and I come across, you know, crypts on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? It, back then, you that was... Well, back then, when I was in the island, there was no crypts down here yet. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I didn't see them until I was up north. That's how I became crypt in 1998 in Attica. You know what I'm saying? So, but... And on the island, there wasn't really no crypts when I was down here yet. The blood was really just starting to come out, but they wasn't in the fourth of them yet. By the time I went up north. So you said dudes formed in Attica in 9 8? Or it was already, they was already popping in 9 8 in Attica when you got no, there? No, they, was, they, was, they, they actually came, Chris came to New York City in 92. But like upstate, you really didn't see them like that. Like you might hear of them being around before 98, but it'll be like a sprinkle. Like it'd be one or two or three, like, you know, that they started coming into jail. But in Attica, I was able to come across one. You have one minute left. There was only one there. And I'm saying, uh, um, I, I just so happened to go under him. I went under a guy named Harlem. But then two years later, I came under D-Rock, which is the founder that I brought it to New York City in um, Auburn. I'm gonna, uh, they're going to cut us off, but I can call back. I got another, I got another 15. All right. But um, like I said, when I came home, like I didn't want to, I, I didn't forget about the people that I was locked up with. You know what I'm saying? So 
I, I actually started writing a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? I was visiting a lot of people, sending packages, money and stuff. Like, I didn't forget the people I left behind. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I actually started my show, my podcast and stuff, I started actually writing random prisoners. You know what I'm saying? You know, because I know how it is when you're in here, you don't get no love from the, from the streets. So what I did was, my numbers back then was 94A1656. So I actually started writing, going down the line, like 94A1657, 94A1658, 94A1659. And I would write 30 new random prisoners every every uh, month. You know what I'm saying, but I, I, and I would write them, I'm like, look, um, I'm a host of Back to Over Cripple 3030. My name is Woodchuck, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 did, thir- I did 13 years of de- up there myself. Um, you know, I know how it is not to receive mails and money and stuff like that. You know, if you need something, I'm here. Like, if you're coming home, I could maybe help you network you with somebody, you know, stuff like that. You know, just reach out, you know what I'm saying? If anything, you know? That's real. That's, that's very real. How long you said you was home? You said you was home for a long time? Yeah, I actually, I came back through for a year for uh, actually for having a, a knife. They, they gave me attempted criminal possession of a weapon. They gave me a one and a half and three. Um, and then I had a, another brush up with the law where I got caught with some drugs. They put me in an out, uh, outpatient or drug program. But other than that, I was Oh, nearly 13 years in the street with no you problem. You said they gave you a one and a half to three just for a knife? It's OD. For a knife. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, and what was funny is that because of one and a half to three, I figured they put me like in a minimum or a medium. They ended up sending me to Comstock because that's where I went home from. So that, that shit was crazy. Mm. Oh, they sent you straight back to the stock with that one and a half to three? Yeah, but I only was up there for a few months, but I had a few months before I bailed out that, you know, that, that got credited. And then, you know, after a few months, then I got paroled out. You know what I'm saying? So, but, um, so I ended up doing the one, uh, I ended up doing the one and a half, or close to the one and a half, and then I ended up getting paroled out for the rest. How it felt being back on the island after doing like 13 in the can? I'm not gonna lie, like I, because I was bailed out, like I was not here long. Like uh, I got bailed out, uh, you know, pretty pretty fast. So it like kind of like broke up the time. So I was maybe down here maybe two months tops at the time. So it, it didn't really affect me as much. Now down here, being here two years now, it's like uh, you know, especially like coming back to the four building. And, you know, it, it, it definitely was like a culture shock. You know what I'm saying? Like all, you know, like all memories, like it just started coming out. Like I remember when we used to come out in medication line and, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, run through the halls and, you know, so on and so forth, you know? Yeah, they, you on the adult side though, right? Well, now they mix them. So it's not like before, back in the days, they used to keep the adults on one side of the building and they keep the adolescents on the other side. Now they sort of mix them. But majority of the population in the building is adults. And what used to be adolescents are actually now young adults. Because they're actually from 18 on to, to 21. They're not no longer from 16 to 18. Oh, they're they not sending 16-year-olds on the, to the island no more? Nah, now nah, they send them to the juveniles. That's like, crazy. To and stuff like that. That's crazy. So, you know, so it, it is a little different in that aspect. You know, it is real violent in here because they do have, like, um, like literally they got people sitting here. I met a person that was here nine years before they went to trial. Like, before they even started trial. You know, so, you know, they, they got people here for real long less of time and they don't, they don't give them nothing to do. So, you know, and it, like right now I'm in a dorm with 47 other people. You put somebody in that kind of in that kind of situation, you know, people are gonna get stressed. You know, they got nothing to do. They, they hardly even give us rec. Like they supposed to give us an hour rec every day. We get like a we get like the outside rec maybe once every four days or something like that. So niggas just be in the dorm all day. Y'all, y'all go to the mess hall to eat. Well, 
we're the only dorm that actually does. Like my four, um, I don't know if you've ever been on the four building or if you're familiar with the four building, but my four had like two two floors. So it has four dorms to it. You got my four up the south, my four up the north, then you got my four lower south, my four lower north. Those four dorms actually walk to the meso, but it's like maybe uh, less than a half of a city block away. You know what I'm saying? And then you come right back. Every other every other dorm or cell house or have a pantry in it so they get the, the food delivered to their uh, to their um crib so they don't come out for for chow at all. Shit crazy man. Being in that dorm all day is crazy. Well, then like they don't have a general library. They really just started opening up the library again. So that we can go to the library and research like our our cases and stuff like that. And remember the key is to try to get out the door, you know what I'm saying? Because the library is the, is the one that got the key to the gate. So they they just started doing that. Um the mail don't come every day. It might come like every once every three days. You know what I'm saying? Once every two days. You know, things like that. So if you add all of that, it's gonna cause stress factors. I'm saying it's gonna cause people to bug out. Word up. Do they be talking about that Rikers Island closing down shit in there? Well, when we get the newspapers, they rip out the articles. You know what I'm saying? But like when we talk to our families and they tell us what's in the articles and stuff, like I heard that they had a, a protest over the, the bill that they're trying to pass to, to ban solitary confinement. Um, they talk about the violence in, in on Rikers Island. Worst, it's the worst county jail. It, it's the highest violence in, in the county jail in the whole, the whole world. Like they say, it's even worse than the LA county jail right now. The, the violence is so, so great. They read that in the Daily News. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but you, you gotta consider all that. They trying to ban solitary confinement. Jermani Williams introduced the bill to city council to try to ban solitary confinement, which is considered the box. You know what I'm saying? Commonly called the box. Because they say that there's a lot of suicides. We already had like 16 deaths down here. You know what I'm saying? For various reasons. Yeah, man. I seen, seen some shit. It you know was something saying, on the news. It was something on the news the yeah. other day. They was talking about they they let some dude go because he had a heart, he had heart failure. And they said they just tried to let him go so that they could lower it so it won't be another death on Rikers Island. But yeah, man, it's a and, lot of bodies dropping. But what's on funny them. is that they don't they don't do enough of that. Like for example, they had a guy that he died in um, GRVC. He actually he had um, asthma problems and they sprayed him with the um, that mace, the M MK9, and they left him in the cell. They um, he was laying on the on the floor prone for about six seven hours. Before somebody actually came and said, yo, something's wrong with him, why he's not moving? And, you know, he was dead. But they, they, they try to cover it up and they call it an OD. Like, they try to say that he got high and he OD'd off of the, off of the drugs or whatever they took. But his neighbors said that they sprayed him. Even though they knew that he had asthma and stuff. That right, Gazelle and shit, man, with, with health care and all of that, man. Like, if you sick on that island, it's, it's, it's fucked up for you, man, because dudes will ignore you and all of that. Especially if you in the bing. If you in the bing, you locked up, dudes will think you just trying to get out the bing, and they'll ignore your health problems. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's why they're trying to, they're trying to uh, ban the bing now. Or, you know, the box, whatever, you know, whichever one you want to call it, both the same, it's interchangeable. But they they want to ban it because they say that you have people that they actually telling themselves they committed suicide in that kind of environment because they're locked in their cell too long. And they actually not, the, the officers don't take rounds the way they're supposed to. They're not actually uh, caring for us in that kind of environment for people that may not be mentally strong. So what they trying to ban it for everybody or just adolescents? No, they trying to ban it for everybody. They, what they're saying is they, they 
trying to pass a law that says that they can't keep you in your cell for more than eight hours, besides the, the sleeping hours. So that way you always moving, which makes a lot of sense because, like, I was I was just talking to some of the people here. Um, upstate actually has more inmates than Rikers Island, and it has less staff ratio compared to each inmate. Like they may have uh, one inmate for every 30 staff up there. Meanwhile, in Rikers Island right now, they, you have 30 inmates for each one staff up there in Rikers Island. I mean, upstate, but down here you have one inmate for each three staff. But yet they they're less they're more violent down here than they are even upstate. And a, a lot of that factor is that even though you know, a lot of the inmates already know the time they're doing up there, some of them are doing life, they got nothing to lose. They at least have programs every day, they got they go to rec three times a day. You know, they, they do things. They do things to break up their day. Down here we do nothing. We sit in the same dorm all day, see the same people all day. And then people wonder why we argue, why we fight, and so on and so forth. Yo, so what they said they going to do if they ban the box? Like if somebody stabs somebody or cut somebody, what they going to do? Just send them to a, a, a dorm for do, with a bunch of dudes who stab somebody? No, they, they that's actually what they're doing right now. And that's not working because it's going crazy. That's in GRBC. They, what they try to do for a short period was like, if you get cut, they put you right back in the same dorm with everybody that just cut you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that, that's that's crazy. So now what they what what they what the law is suggesting is that they actually separate you from the population for a while. But it's not it's not the box, but it's more like a, a time out type shit for a few hours. Like they might put you in a different crib and you like pretty much in solitary but only for a few hours, like to calm down. And then, you know, in that process, they, you know, they pay attention to you. Like, they come in and talk to you, they find out what's the problem, and so on and so forth. You have one minute left. You know what I'm saying? So they actually follow up. Yes. I actually have another six minutes. If you want, I can call back another six minutes. Call back. I'm on deck. Got some good content? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. We just talk about, we just talk about the island, man, how, how it's functioning now. He told me it's mad different from back in the days. Yeah, man. That shit is just scary to even think about having to be on an island right now. Like, nobody don't want to go through that right now, sitting up inside of a dorm all day. Yeah, that's a big fact. Bro, that's a super big fact. So I said they ain't getting no rack. They just be in the dorm all day long. Yo. But, oh, hold on. Let's him call it back. All right. An incarcerated individual at New York City Department of Correction. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored for law enforcement purposes. If you are an attorney, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number by going to www.nyc.gov. Hello? Yo. Yeah. So, like, you know, my concentration before I came to jail was actually to try to give back to the people that's in prison. I'm saying specifically, you know, uh, you know, my comrades, you know, my locals in prison and stuff. In 2017, me and my wife, Hazel 3030, who's also my co-defendant right now, actually, on his body. She's, um... We, we started a, a movement called No Look Left Behind. The concept was we encourage people to uh, to look out for a look in prison somewhere in the world, anywhere around the world in some way. It didn't matter what affiliation you are. Like, you know, your mama love may not be a gang member, but you know, she looks out for her son who may be a look. Or, you know, you may be blood, but your brother may be a look. You know, you look out for a look. And in any way, the idea is, even if you're writing just a letter, you're sending $5, you know what I'm saying, you're sending a package, you're visiting, any little bit counts, you know, that was really the concept, you know what I'm saying? So, um, 
and that that's something that I really feel wholeheartedly about because a lot of people when it comes to jail, not just not just Crips, you know, I specify looks only because that's something that's personal to me. But everybody needs that same kind of support because when we come to prison, everybody forgets. You know what I'm saying? We don't get the same amount of love as we did when we was in the street, even if we were good people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you always get that majority of people that don't pick up the phone anymore or, you know, don't do the same things that you would have done when you was out there. And I don't believe that people in prison deserve that because not everybody is fat or whatever decision they made in life. They may have made a mistake or they may have done things that they need to do or maybe they accused of things that they, they didn't even do. So they don't deserve to be forgotten about by the loved ones that they actually care for. So, you know, I, I started that movement with, with the help of my wife. She also used to help me run my TV show and stuff. Um, and she also used to help me run my corporation, my my, my clothing line, which is called Fam Life. It's an acronym that stands for Pure Heart and Motivation. The idea is you can keep your, you can lose your house, your car, your freedom, your money. As long as you keep your pure heart and motivation, you get back up and get back on track. You know what I'm saying? It's spelled P-H-A-M. Uh, so it's, it, it sounds like fam, like your family, but it's a PHAM. Mm. But, you know, that that's a movement that, you know, that I really feel wholeheartedly about. It. So, you know, I wanted to mention that I wanted to help get it out there because it's a positive movement. It's something to help people positively. We're not talking about to help them do crimes. We're not talking about to help them do anything wrong. We're talking about just to help your loved ones, you know what I'm saying? If your loved ones happen to be crypt and, you know, that's something that's personal to me, but you can help out anybody. Like, I came across a, a, a blood here that I got real cool with. He wanted to start no blood left behind because uh, he got the idea for me. You know what I'm saying? And I, I support that. You know what I'm saying? Because you should look out for your own. And I'm, I'm pro, I'm pro um, ex-con, pro prisoner, you know, however you want to call it. But anybody who's in our situation that needs the help should get it. Because technically, you know, we've all done something for our loved ones in ways. And right now is is a time when we need it. We need to pay back, you know? That's a fact, bro. That's a fact. If people want to write or whatever, or want to get in touch with me direct, that, that works for me. My name is Jose Rivera. My booking case is 241-200-1638. And my address is RNDC. That's Robert Nancy Shavarian Center, 11-11 Haven Street. Spell H-A-Z, like a zebra, E-N, like a Nancy Street. East Elmhurst, New York, 11370. If anybody want to write, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, have some advice for me. I, I want to take advice. Anybody has any questions? You know what I'm saying? You know, they, they want to elaborate on anything that I brought up. You know, they can feel free to reach out to me. What's that booking case number again? It's 241-200-1638. All right. And the name is Jose Rivera. And I'm on Rikers Island, New York City. Rikers, Rikers Island, New York City, DOC. Department of Correction. Again, my AKA is OG Woodchuck 3030, AKA Cripple 3030 from Harlem Mafia, Harlem Road 30 Crip. Been doing this for 24 years. I'm still gonna be doing it to the day I die, but I wanna do it for positive reasons. I don't wanna do it for what everybody thinks that it's, it's really for, you know? What's up? So you're on Rikers Island right now. You got houses with Bloods and Crips living in the same house? Right now. Got right now, I'm in the house right now. You got Max here, you got Ace here, you got Bloodstone Villains, you got G Sean, uh, uh, GKBs, you got Crips, you got Neutrals, you got, you got a little bit of everything. But we all living here like family. You know what I'm saying? No problem going on here. At least not in this house. That's you know, what's we all man shit here. Yeah, man, that's that. People need to hear that too, cause that's a big myth. Dudes think dudes just always gonna be at each other's throat. Like, know what I mean? When niggas is grown, dudes know how to live in harmony. 
in certain spots. It's the way I figure it is, as long as people look at it like grown men, they will never have those issues. I'm saying people got to treat each other with respect the same way they want to be treated in return. That's all, you know, that's really the, the main thing behind that. You can't get caught up in the little kid mentality. You got to look at each other like grown men. You know what I'm saying? They want to be treated with respect. They got to treat people with respect. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm sorry when you do something wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying excuse me when somebody's in your way or when you bump into somebody. You know what I'm saying? Those are the smallest, those are the smallest unnecessary the most reason that people get into trouble because people they fall into their pride and they're afraid to say I'm sorry when they're wrong and they're afraid to say oh, excuse me when they bump into somebody and it's something that don't cost nothing to do fact that's a fact and after you do a bid you keep those type of manners in the streets like I'll be in the streets if I walk if I walk in between two people talking I say excuse me the average person right. in the streets, if they ain't never do no time, they just gonna walk right in between you and somebody talking and they ain't gonna say nothing. Right, that's a fact. That is a fact. When I came home, the chime in on that, I tell people all the time that the most respectful people in society right now are dudes coming out of prison, man. First, exactly. Exactly. People that, all these other people, because you know, in prison, everything you do has consequence, man. Right? So you learn how to be respectful without necessarily, it don't make you a smaller man to be respectful. But when you never had to deal with the consequences for your actions, people do anything, man. I hear people talk to each other, I hear crazy. I just wanted to chime in on that, man. Yeah, man. My man told me some uh, a real deep jewel one time. He said, he said an old timer that was from the pen told him, he said, yo, why you out here in these streets? Exercise your right to shrug something off. You feel me? Like if a dude bump into you and he don't say excuse me, exercise your right to exercise that that privilege to shrug that off because in the pen, you can't shrug that off. You right. feel what I'm saying? It's going to turn into something. So when you got right. your freedom, you got to you got to cherish the 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 privilege and the option to say, "All right, man, I'm going to shrug that off and not say nothing." Even though that dude was completely wrong. You know, just to piggyback on what Shadow said, that, that is the truth. When I came home, I noticed that people did not have that respect. People that never did time before, they did not have that same respect. I, I'm constantly, you know, saying excuse me and I'm sorry when I'm walking down the street. Or if I, if I, you know, if I sneeze, I'm covering my mouth. You know what I'm saying? If I cough, I'm covering my mouth. You know, so on and so forth. If I'm interrupting somebody's conversation, I, I got no problem with saying excuse me and wait until my turn. And these people in the street that never been in prison before, they don't care. They'll jump into your conversation. They, they it's not even their conversation. They not even know you. They just hear you say something and they, they just chime in. And you know, without even saying excuse me, like you know, just little. It's like little ways to disrespect people to disrespect each other. They have they don't have that respect. That means they got no self respect. That's the traps of the street, man. When you come home from the can, though, that's the traps right there. Like, it's going to be people in these streets that they ain't never been where their actions or their rudeness had a real consequence. So they 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 just wow. You feel me? It even be like that on the island in some, in some cases. Like, some dudes on the island ain't never been up north before. You feel me? And they just, they savages. And you, you may, you may be a dude who did a bid before, and you got some respect and some discipline, and you gotta sleep right next to a dude who ain't never do no time up north, and he just a savage. You feel me? So that that be a real test, man. That be a real yeah, test. That's that true. Yeah, because I remember I was in OBCC. I had came home from doing six joints, so I had a little militance with myself. You feel what I'm saying? But it was dudes in it was dudes in my crib that it was their first time locked up. And they was just mad, wild, and disrespectful, and they mouth was crazy. I'm like, damn, I don't know if I could survive this in here. Know what I mean, I'm used to I'm used to up north rules. Yeah. yeah that's man. True. That's I had true. to adapt. I had to adapt though. But I definitely appreciate the chance for you know to let me voice my, my story. 
you know. Um, when I get off, I'm gonna talk to Paul so he can call you. Uh, you know, maybe call cool Shadow. Uh, not today, uh, at some point, so that you know y'all can do the same thing. I bet, bro. Appreciate you, though, man. Appreciate you for facts. Yeah, no question. No question. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, man, hold your head up in there, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, if you can, tune in to my TV show. Give it some, give it some views, man. Back Talk Media on YouTube. Check out my song on SoundCloud, Cripple Thirty Thirty. You know, give it a few listens. I'm going to pin the link. I'll pin the link in the comments when I put this out. And then anybody who see go in the comments, they'll have to see the link to your joint. I appreciate that. I really do. You have one minute left. Shadow, I love you, my brother. Love you too, man. Stay up, Shadow. Love you too. Tell Jessica and the kids I love you too. I will, man. Thank you so much. All right, Shadow. All right, Shadow. Good looking, man. Holla at me, my bro. All right, that's brother. Right. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you too. All right. All right. Peace. Peace.